What do you feel are the key characteristics of a world-class social community? Um, there are really a number of, of characteristics, things like um, probably the biggest one is to make sure that your community has a business objective. Um, we think that the difference between a social network, say like Facebook or LinkedIn, um, or more Facebook versus a branded community that a company would launch is that you have to have a clear business objective. So that's probably um, the biggest characteristic that we see. Um, but there are a lot of things um, in addition to that, um, being personable, um, ensuring that there's some membership benefits that exist that are above and beyond um, what the general public would have access to. Otherwise, they shouldn't join your community. Um, but I think probably the, one of the most important things is to make sure that you have all the characteristics of a community. Um, there are lots of forums and things like that that don't necessarily get you all the way to community. And so we really think of the fact that you need to have um, a common interest um, that your members have, that they need to come back regularly, so they have to have, so it's not really just one visit, you have to have multiple interactions, and they have to establish relationships. And relationships not just with the people that own the community, but relationships with the other members. And once you have all three of those components, you actually have an opportunity to establish a, a strong community. Um, what are the biggest mistakes that you see people make um, in terms of establishing a community? Um, it, it's interesting and again we're talking about company owned communities I think one of the um, interesting things is everyone in the company wants to have some level of participation people often forget to have an owner um, so there's a lot of change management that needs to go on to make sure that it fits with your company culture um, and things of that nature so you really do have to have an owner you really have to have a community manager those are some of the foundational things that need to be in place um, once you move beyond that um, one of the interesting things is people often forget that they need to be personal a community is still people interacting with other people and oftentimes they tend to use um, cold marketing messages and they're broadcasting out but none of that actually encourages engagement and so that's probably um, one of the big mistakes is people forget that they need to have genuine dialogues not canned messages have people interacting with other people because it really isn't a situation where if you build it they'll come you have to stay involved throughout the life of your community um, so if, say for example, a company builds a community and it's initially successful and has a lot of momentum um, and then it kind of tapers off, um, what types of things can um, companies do to kind of reignite the interest in their community? Yeah, I think that's a good question. One of the concepts that we've come up with is this whole idea of the community life cycle. And we really think that a community moves through a number of stages. And the first one is an onboarding stage. And that's when you're really just starting, trying to seed your community, trying to get it going. Then it becomes, becomes a little more established where you have some engagement happening. And then it gets to a mature level. What happens with mature communities, um, sometimes people think that bigger is better and that it's already mature, it keeps growing. But actually, again, since we're talking about people interacting with each other, um, the studies show that people, once they get to about 150 connections, actually have a hard time staying social and staying engaged. So one of the things that you should look for is whether or not the level of engagement is starting to decrease. Mm -hmm. It might actually be time to split your community, mm -hmm. to break off certain topics into either separate groups or separate communities and then that allows them to create um, really a new level of momentum. So what types of um, strategies are there for community segmentation? Like what types of factors um, are people splitting their communities based on? It really is going to be based on the needs of the community. I mean there's, there's lots of examples. Um, if you had an environmental community for example. Mm -hmm. When you start that community, you're going to want all of the conversations happening in one place, even though you might be talking about recycling, you might be talking about energy conservation, and you might be talking about um, water conservation. Three different topics, all within um, environmental issues, but you're still going to have all those conversations taking place in one spot. Otherwise, people won't feel a sufficient level of engagement to want to jump in. Mm -hmm. Well, after your community has been established for a while, one of the groups, maybe the recycling group, might tend to have lots and lots of conversation. There may be some leaders that are in it. When that's what you're looking for, is there's significant conversation and some community members that tend to be leaders that you could go ahead and encourage them to move into a new space that then allows 
allows them to stay strong, but still keeps enough engagement for the rest of the community mm -hmm. to continue those conversations. That's the kind of thing you're looking for, um, regardless of the type of community that it is. Okay. So if I have a company and I throw up a forum and I have a business objective, um, is that a community? Probably not. <laughs> Probably not. Um, so what would you do if you had that situation where I, I really want to start a forum to get something accomplished? Well, I think one of the first things you do is you have to invite some members. Um, putting it up there, the chances that people just hop in are slim to nil. Um, so you actually need to do some personal invitations. Mm -hmm. You have to have that early group of people that are going to be committed to helping you see things. So they have to have enough of an interest in what you want the community um, to be about, to be willing to jump in, to be willing to help out. Um, so you do that. You have to be seeing it with content on a continuous basis. You have to encourage the behavior so that you get the relationships, so that you get the frequent visits. Okay. Um, so one thing that's always problematic on, online is, um, I guess, anonymous. You know, being anonymous breeds um, people just saying crazy stuff. Right. You know? <laughs> right. <laughs> In all honesty, um, how you know what? What are some strategies for dealing with that type of thing without ostracizing your community members? I, well, there's a couple of things. One, um, we first would encourage you to let people read but not post uh -huh. without becoming a member. Okay so that you don't have completely anonymous people that are posting. What you would have then is some username. Mm -hmm. Well, that still doesn't have to be a real username, but it does help cut down on some of that. Mm -hmm. um, now that there's a, an identifiable user with an email address um, that is valid. So that's one level. The next thing is, um, having a clear set of guidelines that you put on your community, nothing really long and extensive, just clear things that tell people how you'd like them to behave, the kinds of content, and some consequences for not complying. Mm -hmm. You share those guidelines and then you do need to publicly enforce them okay. in a very polite way. Somebody is acting up, somebody is spamming, you do send them a signal that says, just want to let you know, this is not in accordance with the behavior. You do it publicly because eventually other members will see that that's not appropriate behavior and the community starts to learn. Other members start to correct that behavior as well. If they continue to be naughty, uh, you, have, you always have the option of kicking them out of your community as a final straw. Okay. Um, so what are some metrics that organizations can look at to determine if their community is successful? When we look at metrics, we actually think about them, again, in a number of categories. And the first is growth, um, so your community health and viability. Every community has to be growing, it has to have engagement um, in it. And so you're going to want to look at what might be the traditional web metrics initially, things like page views, visits, but you're going to want to look at return visits as well. So some of those kinds of things that give you a sense of, are people coming to my community and are they staying? The next thing you want to look at is the level of engagement because again the difference between just a forum um, and a community is people are coming back, they're talking to each other, they're asking questions, they're answering questions. So you want to make sure that that's happening. So I need them to come, I need them to become members, and then once they become members I need them to engage and so I want to look at all three types of metrics there. Then again there should be some business objective. And so if I have support is one of the things that I'm going to do, I want to see if people are asking questions. How quickly are they getting answers to the questions? Are members in my community helping answer each other's questions? And then you'd have the same thing for other use cases if you were doing networking or if you were doing interactive marketing um, as some other examples. But you'd have specific metrics that you would track related to your specific use case. Um, given the current business environment, is it critical for all types of organizations to um, have a community or to establish some social presence? I do think that it's critical. Um, when you think about where we are from a social perspective, if you think a few years back, everybody had brochures and then it was not acceptable to not have an internet presence. I mean, you had to have some type of, of web space. Um, well, now we're in an era where social is the new norm. Um, everybody is social and um, your customers are already on Facebook, your customers are on Twitter, your customers are on LinkedIn. Um, the conversations about you and your business are happening and if you don't have a presence, if you're not listening, if you're not engaging, you're the only people that are being left out. Um, and so at some level, it doesn't need to be all the way to the level 
of uh, uh, on-domain community or company-owned community like Telligent does. It doesn't have to go that far. Um, a great place to start, if you're new, is a Facebook page. Um, but you need, to, you need to have some type of social presence because that's what the market demands. Okay. All right. Well, that's actually all the questions that I have for you. Uh, thanks for taking time great. to speak with me today. Well, thank you. All right. Thanks. Thank you.